Welcome to another episode of Shop Talk. In the previous episode, we installed the live-in system from Alucab, the Alucab Canopy Camper, into our new 2022 Tundra, Orion. This innovative truck bed platform will also serve as the foundation for the living system of our 2022 Tacoma, Raven. When complete, Raven will feature a high-capacity base station for charging production equipment, an integrated heating system, and a functional galley, all of which will allow this truck to operate independently from the convoy when needed. Back to Shop Talk, guys. We are working on Raven today. We have our Alucab canopy system that we just set down on the bed, for hopefully for the final time. Just test fitting everything and getting everything lined up. So now we're gonna finish bolting this guy down and we're gonna start running wires. We're gonna start putting it all together because there's a ton of boxes that we still need to unbox. We're to the point of actually starting to run wires into it and outfit it. We have a lot of stuff we're waiting on. Supply has been short, so we're just kind of doing it as we can. I have the entire door frame sealed up, bolted in. It's pretty much one with the truck now. This is not a you can lift it on and off type of install. I mean, you could, but it, it'd be a thing. So we used some Sitka Flex sealant, sealed all the nooks and crannies that we could find. We're gonna keep looking for them by putting a bright light inside and just looking for any light that comes through. You wanna seal it as best you can because dust will find its way in. But now what we need to do is get all the wires from our previous install. We have the Red Vision and the Manager 30 from Red Arc inside of the back seat. So we have all the wires from our past install here. It looks like a mess, but it's gonna make sense once I make sense of it myself here. And now we just need to make sure they're all clear of where I'm gonna drill. I'm gonna drill close to a two inch hole, pull it all through and then we're just gonna, and it's gonna need all the room it can get. And then we're just gonna seal it up with some goo pucky. It's all gonna be hidden away once we get our goose gear system installed in there. So it should all work out. So we have like our solar panel wires. The Canopy Campers actually have an Anderson in, on the roof and it's all pre-wired for solar. So instead of this going up to the roof, it's gonna go into the camper and just butt connect right into the power and ground they already have. So that's a really cool feature. So I'm gonna crawl into the bed to drill our hole. Quick shop talk top tip is if you are doing a lot of work in the, your bed or in anything that's kind of an awkward position, have an old, we have an old yoga mat that we have laying around. So toss that in there makes it a lot more comfortable to be in there for a long period of time working on stuff in awkward positions. This is the main battery power and ground for the Manager 30 in Red Vision. So this is going into the Manager 30. So this is gonna go where the new batteries are gonna go, which we can't figure out until we have the goose gear and put in. We know. So there. Now we have the mess from the outside into the inside. Progress. Well, I have a bit of a puzzle to figure out here. We have a bunch of wires that need to go to different areas, so I'm just gonna take some time here, figure it out. We'll report back when I get it as far along as I can get it. Everything is wired in. Again, the uh, Alley Cab Canopies have all their wires pre-labeled, which is nice. So I just brought in our wires, tapped them in. And now since we're putting goose gear in here later, I don't wanna permanently install this cause I don't know if it's gonna live where it's gonna live. So I'm gonna loom everything in a big loom and just basically temporarily tape it along the side here. So the next thing I want to do before we continue on with any other installs, I just want to test the system. So I'm going to go ahead and put terminals on the wires and just temporarily hook it up to a battery so we can turn on the red vision, turn on the lights in the camper, just make sure everything works. So if we're going to test it, we might as well test it with the, one of the batteries that we are going to be installing in there. It is a Battleborn 100 amp hour lithium self-heated battery. The self-heating is critical. We here in Montana have a lot of issues of needing to park the trucks outside in the wintertime 
The batteries won't charge because it gets below freezing and lithiums, it damages the lithium cells if they try to charge, so it shuts it off. So now we'll be able to park them outside in the winter time. They'll be self-heated with no issues. Plus, God, those things are amazing. We're gonna be able to mount them in a vertical orientation, hopefully. This is all to be determined once we get the goose gear in, but you just have your positive negative lithium batteries. They're amazing. So we're gonna use this guy to test it. So the Red Vision is hooked up and running. So now let's see if I can get some lights on in here. <laughs> Something just turned on. Sweet. So top light there turned on. Tent light is on. Bam. Beautiful. Well, she's ready. I don't see anything wrong with this install here. We'll just leave it like this. My name's Clay, and today I have Brian from Goose Gear, the founder of Goose Gear, with us. And today, behind us in the shop, we are starting some pretty cool installs. In the shop, it's when you open the door. Okay. We are going to be, <laughs> we are going to be installing the Goose Gear system in yes, a Tacoma, and yeah. the first one in a third gen Forerunner. And third, third gen, oh tundra. my god, Tundra. <laughs> it's a Tundra. Uh, We've it's done one in the floor. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and it's never been done before. Never been done before. Test fitting it here, actually, for yeah. the first time. So let's, in the words of Tanner, let's get to it. <laughs> you missed the cue. I could hardly hear any. I could hardly hear that. <laughs> we like to give it that real Christmas feel. Uh huh. So we make sure to wrap it up nice and solid. You really only need four bolts to mount the whole thing down. Gotcha. Um, but we can get we can get to all of them. Pretty simple here. And so for like the tie downs and stuff, like we have the fridge that'll be going in, we'll want tie downs. We drill and put the uh, T nuts in wherever we need those, right? Yeah. So and that's the that's really the unique unique thing with our bed plates. So all of the holes that are already here in T nuts, they're designed for our system because we know where that's going to locate. Yeah. That's the reason we don't add additional holes is we don't know who's gonna put what where. Like you guys are putting the fridge on the rear mm -hmm. passenger. My fridge is in the front bulkhead. Yeah. Um, we know somebody that has a fridge slide on the left side. So if we did that, we'd have holes everywhere. Yeah, it'd just be Swiss cheese. Yeah. So, but it is a birch plywood. Um, it's a proprietary blend of Linex double-sided. So you, you can easily drill whatever holes you need, slap a T-nut on the backside. So these are pre-installed T-nuts, and what they are is basically a threaded insert that has these barbs that will hammer into the backside of a board of wood where you want to bolt something. And it's just a really nice way to add a threaded insert into thinner wood. And so this is the backside, this is the side that you would hammer in. And then on the top side, you'll just have a hole with a threaded insert. is the part of the show when we get to introduce to you a brand new fridge that we have never used. It's a National Luna, which we love, but it is a much smaller size. We've actually, in these two trucks, going to a smaller dimension for the interior because in the Patriot Camper, we're running really big fridges. So we didn't feel like we needed big fridges in the other trucks too. We have plenty of space through our experience. Well, let's check it out. National Luna fridges come from South Africa, and our good friend Paul May at Equipped Expedition Outfitters, longtime supporter of ours, sponsor of ours, outfits us. So if you want one of these, Equipped Expedition Outfitters. It's cute. It's really cute. So uh, 
the National Luna fridge, we've been running these for years. They are fantastic. They're probably one of the best, if not the best fridge on the market. Over the years, they've gone through reiterations. They've, they've got their cost back down uh, because they were using a different compressor. Now they have a better and cheaper compressor. Um, we've never had a National Luna fridge fail us in 12 years of running. These are excellent. Uh, so I put my full trust in these and they are one of the only fridges, if not the only fridge, that is certified to carry medicine from the World Health Organization because of the way that it can regulate temperature. The other thing is, is they just sip power. They're very, very efficient. This is gonna go in the Tacoma and in the Tundra. We got two of them. We always recommend hand tools. I've seen a lot of people take a drill, just start going to town. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you didn't adjust the torque on the drill. Now you strip something out or cross threaded. With these campers, I mean, you can kind of go half inch forward, half inch yeah, back. Tolerances yeah. that you want to fill in. And then same thing side to side. So okay. this is why we say put the cabinets in first. I see. We give you this that way, if it's a little off-centered or off-camber, uh -huh. we can adjust as needed. Yeah, we'll start with the double drawer. So again, I like to do this right at an inch. A fundamental part of our build process at XO is to create a layout of what an interior space will look like when completed before we begin the installation process. The goal is to have all the components fit together like a tightly built puzzle. This not only speeds up the build process, but also guarantees a solid bulletproof assembly when finished. So the exciting plan we have decided on is with the Battleborn batteries, we're gonna flip them up on end. They're gonna sit nice and flush at the very front of the bed, keeping all the weight centered and in the middle of the vehicle. Even though they don't weigh much, it's still something to consider. And what's cool about that is that we're gonna be able to put in a second wall in here, kind of like this guy, that's gonna go in front here. Everything electronics, battery-wise, is gonna be really tucked away, protected, and we're gonna gain even more storage space. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of mark on the base plate where the batteries are gonna sit. Then we can pull everything out, drill the holes we need to for the mounts. I'm gonna cut some aluminum angle iron and it's basically just gonna be retainers that keep the battery from sliding around. And then we're gonna put straps over the top. Uh, uh, precise measuring 101 here, boys. This is the beauty of how T-nuts work. You have this little sleeve, those teeth. So now on the other side, you have a quarter 20 threaded insert for mounting whatever to. Right there are two M6 threaded inserts that I cut a plate over here. So this guy is gonna bolt there with these bolts here, just kind of laying things out. All I need is my ground bus here, power fuse, and then the red arc battery sensor. So that's gonna bolt 
right into there. I just gotta bolt everything down, get it in there and wire everything up. That's it guys. We have the goose gear system fully installed. Now we just gotta wait on a few things for our Tundra and we're gonna be doing the exact same thing over there. But it all went well. We even have our batteries figured out. That's gonna be wired in tomorrow. But yeah, we're good to go. All right guys, so just finished up wiring in the battery so I wanted to show it off to you guys. The goose gear panel comes out and I also installed a little utility light little national luna light and there she is We've got the jumpers in parallel so positive positive negative to negative doubles your amp hours keeps it 12 volts then we have the red arc battery sensor here so this is for the red vision and manager 30 system to know what's going on and be able to detect temperature and voltage of the batteries and everything and yeah you got the jumpers hooked across for the heating system so you have with these batteries that have self heaters you have a little stud on each one that you got to go to the positive of the actual battery itself so when you have two batteries you do one stud to the other battery stud then that one to the positive of the terminal I'm very happy with how it turned out we are a week out from Expo and we have Wabasto here to help us install our Wabasto heaters in our Tacoma Raven and our 2022 Tundra build. Raven is ready to go right now. We have the goose gear in it. So we have an idea roughly of where the heater is gonna mount. And so now Dan and I are gonna figure out a bracket system and figure out where we need to mount it and cut the holes to run the exhaust and fuel line in. One of the most important things when you're doing one of these installs, and I, I tell all my customers the same thing, super critical that you do a planning phase okay figure out where the heater is going to go where you're going to run your exhaust where you're going to run your fuel line if you do that prior to doing the heater install it cuts your your install time really down So what we just did is we ran our controller wires across the front above the batteries, behind the cabinetry over here, behind the drawer system, and they're coming up back here in the back of the vehicle. So our controller is going to be mounted up here in the back for the heater. So now what Dan is doing is he's routing the fuel line down through another hole. It's another hole? Or another the, hole. Yeah. Yep want to put the fuel line and exhaust right next to each other. Another hole where we already have pre-installed that fuel stem in the fuel tank itself. So this heater is gonna be pulling gasoline right out of our main tank. It burns, if you had the heater on high, running for about eight to 10 hours, it'll maybe burn a gallon, considering the fact that if it was running that entire time. So we're not worried at all about it pulling too much gasoline out of our main tank. That would be very poor planning on our part if we were to run out of gas because of that. So we've connected the diagnostic tooling to the heater and now we've got the diagnostics pulled up on the laptop. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a fuel prime and then we're gonna go ahead and try and start the heater one more time. We have a thermal gun though, we can look at the actual temperatures coming but, out. But if we look, oh, here we go. we're already 89 degrees in, inside the Dang. inside the compartment. And that's in a matter of five minutes. Yeah, and I would say. And that's I mean, on the floor of the compartment. The yeah. controller's on the floor. Oh yeah. And so we're at 90 at least. Now you're gonna start the heater's gonna start backing down. Mm-hmm. Gotta run it. Woo! 
No pun intended. So does this just get started? Yeah. It's just starting, yeah. Just started. Yeah, just started. Ooh. It's it gets hot quick. Thanks for joining us on this shop talk. We'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao. Raven is now one of the coolest Tacomas we have ever built. And soon, the team will be able to take this incredible machine to some incredible places.